last meeting last meeting this year and our speaker today david yost is going to close down the series the second edition of the series so david yost is an expert in many many areas now suddenly probably suddenly for himself as well he switched to uh convex geometry i'm not sure whether he calls this subject the same way i call it maybe uh, he will clarify what this subject means and uh, today he he's going to present on his recent or relatively recent discoveries in this area and i hope he will be able to share his slides because i don't have the title at hand because i was i i, I didn't expect to be cheering this meeting okay minimizing the number of faces so it sounds like optimization in accordance with our seminar of course minimizing the number of faces of a class of polytopes and david probably will explain to us what class of polytopes he means and uh, probably a few words about his courses please david go ahead okay well thank you for the introduction alex and uh Thank you to the uh, organizers for the invitation to speak here. Um, I hope that I don't uh, close down the seminar because the topic is considered inappropriate. Um, so I should thank the optimization community for letting me be part of their club because I think that really what I do is on the fringes of optimization. But uh, so I hope you'll find it interesting. Um, yes, convex, convex geometry is a fair description of what I do. So, um, and let me add, uh, some of this work is work that I did uh, several years ago with Guillermo and Julian, and some of it is work that I've been doing much more recently, uh, just with Guillermo. So, um, so, we know what a polytope is, it's the convex hull of a finite set. And here is the connection with optimization, uh, a typical optimization problem, for example, linear programming problem. You're trying to uh, optimize some function, possibly a convex function, possibly not. Um, and it's defined on some set, which might be a polytope, and you want to fi find its minimum or its maximum. And what I'm going to do is uh, also an optimization problem, but of a different sort. So um, my functions are not going to be twice differentiable or convex because my domain is going to be different. Uh, the domain that I'm interested in is the collection of all possible domains of linear programming problems. In other words, collections of polytopes. And the functions that I'm looking at are functions from the class of all polytopes or some subclass of polytopes um, into the real numbers or but usually just into the natural numbers so they are integer valued functions so i'm not concerned about differentiability or continuity um, i guess you could say my functions are locally constant okay so what do i want to minimize well i typically want to minimize or maximize uh, the number of edges. So let's say we've got a, a three-dimensional polytope with uh, a given number of vertices, V vertices. It's been known for a long time that the maximal number of edges is 3V minus 6, and that you attain 3V minus 6 if and only if every face of the polyhedron is a triangle. So this question is easy in three dimensions. In four dimensions and higher, uh, there is an object called the cyclic polytope, which I won't define, but the cyclic polytopes have the property that they are neighborly. That means that every two vertices are joined by an edge. This is counterintuitive if you think about it. This just doesn't happen in three dimensions, except for the simplex. Um, but in higher dimensions, it, it's quite a common uh, phenomenon. Uh, 
And obviously, uh, V choose two is the maximum number of edges you could possibly have. So the problem of maximizing the number of edges is easy. Um, another function you could maximize is the number of uh, k-dimensional faces for a different value of k, two-dimensional or three-dimensional or whatever. And the corresponding result was proved for higher dimensional faces by McMullen in 1970. It's called the upper bound theorem. It turns out the cyclic polytopes are also the maximizers for the number of faces of all dimensions. Uh, they're not the unique maximizers though. And that's all I want to say about maximization uh, because I really only want to consider in this talk the minimization problem. And the minimization problem is actually much harder. So I'm not going to focus a lot on high dimensional faces. Mostly I'm going to look just at the number of edges. Uh, the problem for simplicial polytopes, that's a polytope with the property that every facet, every maximal face is a simplex, was solved by Barnett also in the 1970s. Um, and I'm not going to state his result. Um, I'm just going to say the, con the conclusion is quite different uh, for general polytopes. The result for general polytopes is much harder. So let's forget about simplicial polytopes and just look at polytopes in general. Uh, but first a bit of vocabulary. So in three dimensions, it's, it's obvious that every vertex has to belong to at least three edges. So we describe the degree of a vertex as the number of edges that run into that vertex. And we call a, polyt we call a polytope simple if every vertex has degree exactly equal to the dimension. It can't be any less. And a short calculation shows that you just try to count the number of edges two ways. The sum of the degrees of the vertices is equal to twice the number of edges. So in general, uh, the number of edges must be at least half the dimension times the number of vertices. And you can have equality only if every vertex has degree exactly the dimension. So and these polytopes are called simple. So a vertex is called simple if its degree is exactly D and its uh, dimension, it's, uh, the whole polytope is called simple if every vertex is simple. Uh, now, there's not that many simple polytopes, at least for a small number of vertices. So I'm going to try and switch to the whiteboard. Uh, because I'm missing old fashioned teaching and I like to draw on boards. So here is an example of a simple polytope, the tetrahedron in three dimensions. And now I'm going to describe a procedure called truncating. I'm going to truncate one vertex. So let's just take a, a plane which goes through the polytope, in this case, the tetrahedron and cuts off one vertex. So I've got a, a two dimensional plane and I slice a bit off. And what happens, this plane is going to intersect the tetrahedron in a triangle. So what I'm going to end up with is a new polyhedron. So what's happening here is that I've cut off a vertex and what I end up with is a prism, combinatorially a prism. So the three square faces are not parallel to one another, Oh, well, sorry, the three edges joining the two triangles of the prism are not parallel, but we still, combinatorially, this is a prism. We have two triangular faces and three quadrilateral faces, and the edges, um, they belong to concurrent lines. And the same is true for a traditional prism with parallel edges, because the three lines can be considered to be concurrent at infinity. So I can make a projective transformation, and this is, would be a normal right angle prism. So if I cut a simple vertex, then I end up with another simple polytope. 
And the same procedure works in higher dimensions. And I'm going to draw that very roughly, but if I have uh, a higher dimensional simplex, suppose I've got a, a D-dimensional simplex, which is the convex hull of a D minus one dimensional simplex, which has D vertices and another point. And if I cut that off by a hyperplane, the hyperplane is going to intersect that in another simplex, dimension D minus one. So that intersection will be another simplex with D vertices. And what I've got is a higher dimensional prism. If I decide to cut two dimensions, so what I've got now is a higher dimensional prism. It's a polytope with two D vertices and it's got uh, every vertex is simple. I don't have to cut off vertices. I could cut off an edge. I could cut off a two dimensional face or a three dimensional face. So if I cut an edge, I'm going to end up with, uh, if I started with a simplex and I cut an edge from the simplex, um, what I'm going to end up with is a polytope which has the edge that gets cut off. I'm going to have, let's see, if I've got, if I take, consider the polytope as the simplex, as the convex hull of D minus one vertices, the simplex of co-dimension co two and two other vertices. When I cut off those vertices, and the edge join them, what I'm going to end up with is a new, uh, not a facet, a ridge, a face of co-dimension two, which is going to be another prism. So if I cut an edge from simplex, what I end up with is an object which is the convex hull of three faces of co-dimension two, and looks like this. So for every two vertices, there are a collection of parallel or projectively parallel edges joining corresponding vertices in each pair of simplices. And now I've got a simple polytope with uh, how many? 3D minus three vertices. And I'm going to give this a name. I'm going to call this delta two, D minus two. It's the sum, the Minkowski sum of a triangle, which is a two dimensional simplex and a D minus two dimensional simplex, which has D minus one vertices. And in general, Delta MN is going to be the sum of two simplices, which are in orthogonal subspaces in RD. And these are the, the simplest example of simple polytopes. So let me go back to the presentation. Um, okay, now, so if you have a simple polytope, uh, you can't have an arbitrary number of vertices. You can have D plus one vertices, the simplex, you can have two D vertices, the prism, you can have 3D minus three vertices, that's delta two, delta two D minus two. You can have 3D minus one in every dimension. There's an example with 3D minus one vertices. And in dimension six, and only in dimension six, there's an example with 3D minus two vertices. So there are gaps in the possible number of vertices. On the other hand, um, yeah. I, I define this on the next slide. F, F1 means the collection of one dimensional faces. So the minimum possible number of edges, one dimensional faces of a polytope with V vertices dimension D is a half VD if V is sufficiently large. So if we go to the other extreme, you look at a large number of vertices, you can always find a simple polytope. And sufficiently large means, well, D squared is big enough, even a bit smaller. So the minimum possible number of edges for all sufficiently large numbers of vertices is a half VD, as long as this is an integer. So at least one of these numbers has to be even. 
And if one of them is not an integer, the minimum number of edges for fixed V and D is given by this expression, which is not a half more than the expression I had before. You might ask, why can't I just add a half to this expression to get an integer? And why can't that be the minimum? Well, we have to add a bit more. We actually have to add a half D minus one to get the right answer. And I'll explain that why, why that's true a bit later. Okay, so that's some basic vocabulary. Now here's the definition that was mi missing from the previous slide. So FMVD is the set of possible integers N such that I can find a D-dimensional polytope with V vertices and N faces of dimension M. And I'm looking at the minimum possible value of N. I want to minimize this number N, the number of faces of a given dimension. And mostly I'll be concerned about the case M equals one, but I'll state the problem more generally. And this problem started with Grunbaum. He defined this function in 1967. Um, we don't have to remember what it is, um, but it's just a quadra it's just a polynomial function of all of the variables, so it's not something terribly complicated. And he conjectured that this was the minimizer of the number of m-dimensional faces. As long as the number of vertices is less than 2D. Um, you can easily see that this is false if V is bigger than 2D minus 1 because this term you subtract off gets larger and larger and the whole thing eventually becomes negative, which doesn't make sense. So he didn't investigate the case of more than 2D vertices. He proved this conjecture for every value of M, as long as the number of vertices was less than D plus four. And his proof got progressively complicated. He had separate proofs for D plus one, D plus two, D plus three and D plus four. D plus one is easy, you've only got the simplex. D plus two vertices, these are completely classified and well understood, and I might talk about it a bit later, so that's not hard. D plus three, his proof uh, was a bit longer. And D plus four, it goes on for a couple of pages, and so you understand why he didn't try D plus five. Uh, McMullen, prove the conjecture facets. So that's, K, that's for faces of co-dimension one. And that was all the progress that was made until about five or six years ago. So no more progress until 2014 on this question. And then what we did then is we proved that Grunbaum's conjecture is correct in the case M equals one no matter how many vertices you have, up to 2D, this is correct. And not only do we find that, uh, find the minimum value, we characterize the minimizer. The minimizing polytope is unique. And we also found the minimizers for 2D plus one vertices and 2D plus two. We push it a bit further. Now, from now on, I'm not going to say much about high dimensional faces. Um, I might, but mostly I'll write phi instead of phi one. I'll just drop the subscript. Um, sorry, I've... Uh, I think I've got the wrong slide now. Okay, so here is the result. If you've got a polytope with D plus K vertices, it's nice to write it this way, K is less than D. Then the minimizing polytope is a pyramid over a K dimensional prism. So I take a, a prism of dimension K, 
and I take a pyramid over that d minus k times, get me up to dimension d. This polytope has exactly the number of edges given by the formula. It also has the number of higher dimensional faces that minimizes them as well. And every other polytope has strictly more than this number of edges. And uh, moreover, the number of non-simple vertices of any polytope is at least d minus k. Amongst all the polytopes with d plus k vertices, they all have uh, strictly more than d minus k non-simple vertices and have a quality exactly d minus k non-simple vertices only if it's this multifold pyramid, which we call a triplex and we denote by m k d minus k. So here are some pictures of some triplices. So if I take uh, the simplest is uh, a square in two dimensions, that's uh, a prism because a one-dimensional uh, one uh, simplex is just a single edge and the prism over that is a square. Uh, M21 is a pyramid over, M over the square, M20. So we just add an extra vertex that brings us to three dimensions. If we add one more vertex, do a pyramid one more time, that brings us into four dimensions. So we've got a square somewhere down here. This is our square base. And then we do the pyramid twice, bring us up to four dimensions. The three-dimensional prism is uh, just this familiar object, two triangular faces connected by edges. N31 is a pyramid over this. So here is the apex of my pyramid. It's connected to all of the six vertices in the three-dimensional prism. Uh, what is a pentosome? I'll come back to that a bit later. So um, I'm going to give a sketch of the proof. And the basic idea of the proof is this identity. This is not at all obvious, but it's extremely easy to prove. It's just you know, high school algebra. We're, we're actually only dealing with quadratic polynomials at worst. And what does this inequality mean? What does this equality, sorry? Well, we take our polytope and we look at a face of it, a facet, a maximal, a maximal face. That face can't contain every vertex. There've got to be some vertices outside at least some, some number n vertices outside. So n vertices are outside our face, outside our facet. And the number of vertices can't be uh, more than k because the facet has to, be, has to have dimension d minus one, which means the facet has to have at least d vertices. So there can't be more than k vertices outside the facet. So n is less than k, which is less than d. Now, each of these vertices has degree d. So how many edges contain at least one of these vertices? Well, if you think about it, that number of edges that belong to the vertices outside the facet must be at least this expression, nd minus n choose two. Because the number of edges is minimized if all of the n vertices are adjacent to one another, and then they have just enough edges going somewhere else, in other words, into the facet, to give them each degree exactly d. And any other configuration gives you more, ver more edges than that. So this is the number of edges which belong to the vertices, which contain one of the vertices outside. If you have an edge which is not in one of the vertices outside, it must be in, in the facet. And this is the number of edges. This is a lower bound for the number of edges which are in the facet, because this is the number of vertices that are in the facet, and this is the dimension of the facet. So we proceed by induction on the dimension. And the facet has at least this many edges. Outside, we have at least this many. So in total, we have at least this many edges in our polytope. This is the number we're looking for. So all we've got to prove is that this remainder term is positive. 
Well, I've already said that n has to be less than k, so this term's positive. If n is bigger than two, um, this term is also positive. If n is equal to one, uh, it's a separate calculation that I'm not going to do, but the case n equals one is even simpler. So that's, that's the idea of the proof. And the last sentence is the remark about the number of uh, non-simple vertices. So if this were not true, if we had less than d minus k non-simple vertices, we would have at least 2k, we would have more than 2k simply simple vertices. And if you do a calculation, uh, every non-simple vertex has, all of the simple, simple vertices has to have at least degree d, you would end up with too many edges. So that's the verification of Grunbaum's conjecture for the case of edges. Now we also proved it for uh, higher dimensional faces. And by higher dimensional, I mean M bigger than about 0.62 times the dimension. And this has recently been proved by uh, Lei Shu. When I say recently, it was published online six days ago in the Israel Journal, although it had been on RQ for quite a bit longer. So she actually proved Grunbaum's conjecture for all, all values of M, faces of every dimension, and I have to admit her argument is nicer than ours. So that's Grunbaum's conjecture solved. Now I'm going to change the question. I'm going to define the excess degree of a, of a polytope as the sum of the excess degrees of the vertices. So the excess degree of a vertex is the degree of the vertex minus the dimension. Vertex is simple if its excess degree is zero. And the argument I had before tells you this is the same as twice the number of edges minus the dimension times the number of vertices. A polytope is simple if and only if, Every vertex is simple if and only if the excess degree is equal to zero. So this is one way of measuring how far a polytope is from being simple. And you might ask the question, well, how small can this number be? And the answer is not too small. Um, but well, let me say this is the same question as before. Minimizing the number of edges is the same as minimizing them as the excess degree. You fix a number of polytopes, you fix polytopes with a given dimension and a given number of vertices. So it's the same minimization question, but it's, it's nicer to look at in this context. Now, it turns out that if a polytope is not simple, its excess degree is at least d minus two. And this was, we proved this a few years ago. Um, but I've got a new proof, we did not publish, so I'll present it. But let me just remark that this tells you nothing in dimension three or four. In dimension three, it says that if a number, if an integer, a positive integer is not zero, then it's at least one. And dimension four, if the dimension is even, the excess degree is an even number. So this theorem tells you that if an even number is not zero, even natural number is not zero, then it's at least Two, that's not interesting. Um, but for dimension five or more, this is really telling you something. So here is my argument. Okay, for polytopes not simple, it's got a, a non-simple vertex. So just choose a non-simple vertex and let K be its excess degree. If the excess degree of the vertex is bigger than D minus two, you're, you're finished. So, what we do is we cut off that vertex, we truncate as I did on the whiteboard before, and we, we cut it off and we get, we get a new facet. And that facet has the same number of vertices as the number of edges going out of V. So a vertex has degree D plus K, which is D minus one plus K plus one, and the previous theorem says that if K is less than the D minus two, which is the same as saying K plus one is less than or equal to D minus one, 
that tells us that the facet we're looking at has at least the dimension minus the excess degree uh, non-simple vertices. So it, the facet we're looking at contains at least this many, which is d minus k minus two non-simple vertices. Now every simple number of V corresponds to a simple vertex in the vertex figure. So this tells us in this facet, that this tells us that at least this many neighbors of the vertex are not simple. Now every non-simple vertex has excess degree of at least one. There are this many of them. The vertex we started with has excess K. So we just add them up. The excess degree of the whole polytope is at least K plus D minus K minus two, which is what we want. And that's my last proof for today. So the excess degree theorem actually tells us a lot. But now I'm gonna talk about more examples. So what if you've got more than 2D vertices? Well, uh, we calculated the minimum number of edges for a polytope with 2D plus one vertices. It turns out to be the pentasm. And we've also calculated the number of high dimensional faces. Um, I won't give the answer in full detail. It's a bit complicated, but the basic idea is that the answer depends on whether the dimension is a prime number or not. If the dimension is a prime number, then the pentasm, which I'm about to define, is the minimizer for faces of all dimensions. If the dimension is a composite number, then the minimizing polytope is for a given number of faces, for a given dimension here, M, it's the pentasm of M is low and it's something else, uh, delta M, N for some M and N, if M is high. So let's talk about what a pentasm is. So if you imagine a square pyramid, and I cut off one corner of the base. Cut off one corner of the square, that gives me a pentagon. The whole thing is a polyhedron with seven vertices and six faces. One of them is a pent pent pentagon. And I call this a pentasm because it includes a pentagon as a face and its graph looks like a bit like the graph of a prism. And I'll use the same name for the higher dimensional version, which I can define in various ways, but let's, uh, I thought I had a picture here. No, okay. Okay, I've got pictures here of the pentasm. So this is the three dimensional pentasm. It's got one pentagonal face and then three triangles and two quadrilaterals. And another way to look at this is there is a pentagon here and there is a prism. In this case, a one dimensional prism. In higher dimensions, what I've got is a pentagon as the base here. And in four dimensions, what I've got is a two dimensional prism to complete it. So this is what a pentasm looks like in four dimensions. And I'll draw another picture in higher dimensions a bit later. So uh, if you've got a polytope with 2D plus one vertices, the pentasm has exactly this many edges and everything else, every other polytope with 2D plus one vertices either has more edges or it's the sum of two triangles. Now, sum of two triangles, so the pentasm is the unique minimizer if the dimension is bigger than five, because the sum of two triangles can have dimension at most four. If D equals four, there is a sum of two triangles. It's an object I drew before, delta two, two, and this has one edge less than the pentasm. In dimension three, uh, the sum of two triangles can have seven or eight or nine vertices. The one with 2D plus one, seven vertices, also has 11 edges. And I'll do a picture of it a bit later. So that's the minimization problem solved for 2D plus one vertices. Um, 
All right, there are some more pictures of triplices. They're the same as the ones before. Uh, so here is the object I had before, delta 2, 2. It's the sum of three triangles. It's a four-dimensional polytope with nine vertices. There are three pairs of triangles here. Sorry, there are three set, there are three triangles here. Every two of them gives rise to a three-dimensional face, which is a prism. It has only 80, 18 edges, not 19 like the pentasm. Okay, here is the other object in, um, in three dimensions. So this is uh, a polytope I'll define in higher dimensions, but for the moment, it just considers in three dimensions. So if d equals three, d, d minus one equals two, and this circle here is just supposed to be an edge. So there is a three-dimensional polyhedron, which has two, two uh, quadrilateral faces here and here, which share a vertex, and they're joined by three edges. So this is the second three-dimensional polyhedron with seven vertices and the minimum number 11 edges. Okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about 2D plus 2. Uh, suppose I start off with, uh, instead of cutting off the corner of the base of my pyramid, square pyramid in three dimensions, I cut off the apex. What I'm going to have is then is something equivalent to a cube. If I cut off one corner of a three-dimensional prism, what I'll end up with is the so-called five wedge. This is an object which has two pentagons, two triangles, and three, two quadrilaterals. And of all the three-dimensional polyhedra with eight vertices, these are the only ones which are simple, which have 12 edges. And analogs of these in higher dimensions minimize uh, the corresponding uh, question in higher dimensions for 2D plus two vertices. So I'm not going to draw pictures of this case. I'm just going to describe them quickly. So uh, there are analogs of these in higher dimensions, which minimizes the number of edges. So the minimum number of edges is d plus one squared minus four. And for all dimensions except five, um, these two objects minimize the number of edges. And in most dimensions, they are the only two which minimize. Dimension five, we get a simple polytope as well. So stated in full, uh, if you've got a, a polytope with two D plus two D vertices, where D is bigger than six or equal to three, then the polytopes just described quickly are the unique minimizers and they have this many edges and everything else has strictly more. In dimensions uh, four, five, things, uh, some strange things happen. And seven. If D equals four, there are an extra two polytopes which have 10 vertices and 21 edges. So there are four minimizers instead of two. In dimension five, uh, there is a simple example. It's delta two, three in my notation before. And uh, that's wrong. Um, that's a copy and paste error. So ignore this bit. Okay, in dimension seven, there is a third minimizer, um, but it doesn't have the same number of, okay. So, um, okay, that's it. Okay, that's the case of 2D plus two vertices. Now here, is, uh, here are my pictures in dimension four. So I give names to these things. So AD and BD are the, this is the, the solid 
lines here show you a three-dimensional cube and in four dimensions two extra vertices brings you up to 10. This is one of the minimizers which works in higher dimensions as well. The solid lines in the second diagram are the five wedge. So I've got a pentagon here, another pentagon here, and in between the two pentagons, I've got two triangles and two quadrilateral faces. So this three-dimensional simple polyhedron is somehow at the base of this construction. An extra two vertices takes me into four dimensions. And if I add a higher dimensional prism instead of just a single edges, then I get examples in five, six, seven dimensions for both of these objects. In dimension four, I get two extra objects, uh, one of them called sigma four, which I had a diagram of before, one of them called C4, which I'll produce a picture of in a moment. So in four dimensions, these are the, minimi the four minimizers. Um, now it's interesting that you can ask what, not just what the minimizer of this number is. So this set that I'm looking at, trying to minimize, this is a collection of integers. So its maximum is D plus K choose two. Its minimum is what we're trying to calculate. Uh, but it's interesting to know what the entire set is as well. And it turns out the entire set is not necessarily an interval of integers. It contains gaps. So if you have K bigger than four, then this set, the minimum, there is a minimizing polytope which has exactly five D plus KD edges. And every other polytope not only has strictly more, it has at least K minus two edges more uh, than, uh, than the minimizer. So for example, in dimension four, um, the prism has eight vertices and 16 edges, but no four dimensional polytope has eight vertices and 17 edges. Every other polytope with eight vertices in four dimensions has at least 18 edges. And as K gets larger, the gap gets longer. If you have uh, six, if K is six, then any polytope other than the minimizer has at least four edges more than the minimizer. Now, we know a lot more about polytopes with excess uh, D minus two. Having excess D minus two actually imposes a really strong restrictions on the, the facial structure of a polytope. For example, if a polytope has ex ex excess exactly D minus two, either there is one vertex with excess D minus two, or there are D minus two vertices with excess one. And in both cases, the non-simple vertices actually form a face. So the non-simple vertices can't be scattered all around the, and around the polytope. They have to be all together in one place. And they all have the same degree. And this actually, like for the case of the simple polytopes, this also places restrictions on how many vertices a polytope with excess D minus two can have. So this is new, I haven't spoken about this before. So either the num if a polytope is excess exactly D minus two, either it has D plus two vertices or two D plus one, nothing in between, or two D minus one or three D minus two. And there are these are the natural examples, and this is not a misprint. A4 is correct. A5, uh, this is not AD. AD only works in dimension four. And uh, 3D minus one, only in dimension four. There are three strange examples in dimension four, which have 3D minus one vertices or the number of vertices is bigger than 3D. So you've got gaps in the possible number of vertices. Now, moving along here are uh, some pictures of the minimizers. So for D plus two vertices, the minimize is our triplex. 
it's a multifold pyramid over a square. So I take a two dimensional square and I take a pyramid over that D minus two times. And what I end up with, if you have a look at every vertex in this simplex space, every vertex in here has excess degree one. And every vertex in the square base is simple. And M D minus one one, I have the opposite phenomena. Here I have a facet, which is a prism. Every facet in this D minus one dimensional prism is a simple vertex in the polytope. But the apex of this pyramid has degree two D minus two. It's adjacent to every vertex here and every vertex here. So this is the other case when you have a single vertex with excess degree D minus uh, D, excess D minus two. Um, the pentasm, I can also draw like this. It's the convex hull of a pentagon and a prism with dimension D minus two. And these indicate all the edges. Everything in the pentagonal base is simple. And in the prism, the prism is the convex hull of two simplices. Everything in this simplex is simple. Everything in this simplex has excess degree D minus one. So here are the D, min D minus two vertices all together in a face and everything in the face has excess degree one. Um, here is the object we call CD. So it's the convex hull of a square face again. And 